morning, cyber friends. This is the Mini Man coming back at you again from Walker's Music with no, yet another word for the day. <clears throat> yeah, we can thank God for life, health, and strength. It's a beautiful day. It's not, I should say, well, every day is a beautiful day. Any day that you wake up and you don't see your name in the obituary section, that's a good day. I want to say also that I want to give God the glory for life, health, and strength for as well as it is. And we thank Him. And uh, we want to also thank everybody, the cyber friends, and everybody who support those of you that uh, have been following the little ministry, Middle Man, uh, for these weeks and months and things. We don't want you to know that we Middle Man does not take it for granted. We appreciate all the comments and we appreciate all the videos and the different things that be sent to me. And believe you me, Middle Man takes the time out to check out everything that you're seeing. I want you to know that. And I always welcome any kind of material, anything on any kind of thing on prophecy or whatever it might be. I love music, whatever, music theory, music ministry, music, whatever. You feel free to send it to Middle Man. I will check it out. This morning, <clears throat> I was thinking about doing a, another series of. Uh, Matter of fact, I am going to do another series. I don't know how many I'm going to do today, but there, I'm going to do another series of videos and teachings. And uh, we got some, we got some, we got some issues, people. We got some major, major issues that we need to deal with because there's still a lot of people that I don't think is quite getting it. And as a watcher, it's my responsibility to try to get people to see what I see. That's what I'm going to say, and i leave it at that. In other words, if as I get inspiration and revelation about what the Word of God means, I'm going to share it. I'm going to share it with you. I'm going to share it with everybody I see, everybody I meet. I'm going to share it with them as God gives it to me. Now, this is how come I always uh, warrant, and I make a big claim and suggest to people that you study for yourself. You need to study the Word of God for yourself and ask the Holy Spirit to be your teacher and your guide. And then, you know, you would have a better grip on things. When you hear other people teach and say things, you would have a better understanding or running knowledge yourself. So therefore, you could see whether or not is it lining up with the Word of God. Now, I said that to say this because there are many people that's teaching. There's many people that's preaching. God just didn't deal with you and me alone. He deal with many because as the, like Jesus told his disciples, the, the harvest is white, but the laborers are few. There's nothing wrong with having many laborers, but we got to make certain that everybody's on the same sheet of music. In other words, if we be of God, then our doctrine should not deviate. It should not be night and day to each other. And I'm going to start off by saying, first of all, we, let's look at the Apostle Paul. The Apostle Paul had major opposition, major obstacles that he had to succumb to. And that was mainly the ignorant brethren. Think about it. Look at it. Read the scripture. He had a problem. He, all, most of all the opposition that Paul had mostly came from the ignorant brethren. And believe it or not, it has not changed. 2,000 years later, we're still having a problem with the ignorant brethren. But you don't have to be ignorant. See, that's, that's the point. There's too much information. There's too much information on the, in, uh, on, the, in, on the net, in your Bible, from different teachers and preachers alike. I'm talking about people that are really teaching the gospel. Now, I'm not talking about people that's up there that's talking. There's no need for anyone to be ignorant. And then again, if you have a Bible yourself, there's no reason you don't have an excuse to be ignorant. So this is what I'm going to be dealing with. In other words, I felt like I would deal with it this way. And I'm going to tell you why. Because if you know that, the Apostle Paul, the major one of the major things he had to overcome, and I don't really think he ever did fully, in his lifetime, because you got people that's 
refuse to get knowledge. They refuse knowledge even when you show it to them in their faith. Though ignorant brethren remain ignorant because guess what they were trying to do? They was trying to mix law. Hear me well now. They was trying to mix law up with grace. And that was not, that'll never work. And if you got a teaspoon full of sins, you can read in your gospel, in the Lord's gospels. You read what Jesus said. And then if you read the epistles, you will see that Christ is the end of the law. People, we need to read Romans. We need to read Romans 10. Christ is the end of the law. Now, what I mean by it, does that mean that the law was not good? No. No. Guess what? Jesus is the one that gave us the law. Do you who you think was up on Mount Sinai? Porky Pig? No. Jesus was the lawgiver. Let me tell you some people. It was nothing wrong with God's commandment. It was something wrong with us cuz we couldn't keep them. That was the problem. So Jesus came when the fullness of time came, he came into this front world. Jesus kept the law flawlessly. So that what? Many men don't have to worry about the law. We are under grace now, see. And you cannot mix law and grace. This is why when I hear people mention the Ten Commandments, I don't say anything. Because I understand that some of them, they are ignorant to the fact that we, matter of fact, people, let me tell you something. You are Gentile. Let me, hello, all of you that are not Jews. Hello. If you are not a Jew this morning, you are a Gentile. The law was not given to the Gentiles in the first place. Did y'all not know that? That law was given to the Jews. Okay, that's not the reason I came here. That's not the reason for this series. But I'm, I'm showing you what Paul had to deal with. Paul had to deal with the ignorant brethren that they could not understand that the law. He said, okay, even the Jew, they had the law and they didn't keep it. But yet and still, they were trying to impose something on the Gentile that wasn't given to them in the first place. He said, even the Gentile keep it by nature, something that you don't by commandment. Paul tried to get them to see it. You need to, we need to stop worrying about the Ten Commandments. You can't keep them no way. Stop worrying and stop even mentioning the Ten Commandments. You better mention what Jesus did. That is the key. It's not the commandment so much and for for the we are is we up on the grade. Does that mean you get a license to sin? No. People will sin without a license. We don't have to worry about that. People will do that automatically. But we need to come to the knowledge and the understanding of the grace of God through Jesus. That's what saves us. Now, to get on to the what I was the point that I made, and I don't spent about eight minutes on the preliminary there. I'm trying to get you to what I'm trying to get everyone to see this morning on the start. I got certain pre preachers and teachers and stuff that I hold, I esteem very highly. Because of the fact that so far, I have seen them teach and heard them and what they speak go along with the Bible doctrine as far as I can tell. Now, I could, I could start naming and there was a, quite a few of them that I believe from what I have seen and going and following them in the scripture. They go pretty straight. Do all of them agree? Not necessarily. Not necessarily. They do not all agree because, like I said, we got, and I know we've been hearing this a lot, but we need to hear it. We need to hear it, people, because it, it's very vital to our well-being about this uh, rapture thing. You got different people that's got different views and opinions still. Even after all the evidence that's been, been given against one and the other. But you still got people going to believe what they're going to believe. You got the pre-trib, you got the mid-trib, you got the post-trib. Well, I'm just going to say it like this here. I've heard different preachers, and I'm going to name a few of them all. Benny Hinn. Uh, I've heard Benny teach and preach on the subject. I've heard... Hal Lindsey, one of the greatest, uh, one of the great prophecy teachers, I think, of our time, along with uh, Irvin Baxter, I think, great, great prophetic teacher, Perry Stone, Stan Johnson from the Prophecy Club, that's just to name a few. Now, believe it or not, 
even those all teach from the Bible. But yet and still, everybody is seeing something a little bit different. And I'm not going to argue here, sit here and argue with people about what they believe. But I'm going to say one thing. I heard this guy Stan Johnson, the statement he made. And the statement he made, he said, let everybody just clear your mind. Just, just, just forget about the post, mid, pre. Just pretend that you don't know anything about none of it. And then look at the scriptures again with an open mind. And just, just, just read and just read the scriptures. And he said, if you do that, and then if you come away with whatever belief you have, then guess what? There's really nothing else that you can do for that person. If you still, once the evidence is, people in a court of law, once all the evidence is presented, that's all the law you can do. Present the evidence to the jury. And they decide. And then the judge passed the sentence. Well, we that carry the gospel, all of us that carry the gospel, every believer should be able to carry it. You, that's your that's your job. But you need to teach and rightly divide the word of truth. Now, in the next two minutes, I don't want this thing to go over 15 minutes because I'm going to do some segments. I want everybody to just think, Paul had the same problem trying to get the ignorant brethren to see that you can't mix the law with grace. He, everywhere he went, those when those came down from Jerusalem, that's the, that's the main thing. He wanted to impose the law on the Gentile. Paul kept telling them, no, you cannot do that. That is not the way. But Paul kept telling them, but Paul kept on running into the opposition. That's the same thing we're happening right now about this here thing about this rapture. You got people that still running and, and running and bumping heads on when and how and why. Well, guess what? Many men have always said from day one, you better be ready, regardless. But if we look at Scripture, Scripture plainly, to me, now, from what I saw, what Jesus said, then I go on over there in the, in the Scripture, and you look at what Paul's mentioned about it. And even to Peter, 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 it's a very, and I'm going to find that in the next segment. I'm not going to try to do that in this segment. But I've got Scripture that I will show you where Peter said that in the last days, Marcus, Marcus shall come up. They should rise up saying, where is the promise of his coming? Well, you see, that letting us know. And he said, that will not be. It's also, Scripture said, that that day will not come except there be a what? A falling away. Apostasy. Meaning people leaving the true faith. Why, people? And that man of sin be revealed. Why is it? That, why would, what would make people leave the faith? Unless they have been disappointed by a teaching that somebody had been teaching and it didn't happen. Why would people mock? There would be no need to put that scripture in the Bible if 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 that were going to be a pre-tree of rapture, where the where, where we were going to be taken out of here, there would be no need for Peter to write that about mockers. There would be none. Think about that. But it says very plainly in that in Peter that mockers shall come, and then except there be a falling away, that day of sin, that day could not come. Meaning what? The day of, of the day of the Lord. It will not come except that first, first be a falling away and that man of sin be revealed. People, don't you see? Jesus cannot come until after that be a falling away. In other words, people be to have left the faith because he did not come when they when the preachers and the teachers that been teaching this pre trip thing, they was wrong. And now they say, Well, I'm I forget this, this ain't it, he didn't come, so forget it. They're gonna leave the faith. And the man of sin be revealed. Which is who? That's the Christ. That's all happened during what? What we call the tribulation. So that's an argument. That's just one. I, there's many others in there that we're going to go and get. But we just got to let you know that, that don't be offended and don't be afraid and don't be so worried about because of the fact that you got three different views. Paul, Paul and Peter and all of them, they had the same dealing. They had the same problem. When dealing with grace and the law, you could not, they could not get the certain one that had been fixed and sated in their ways to see it. Just like right now, we cannot get people to see. But you know what? It's not our place 
to try to make and beat people over the head with this thing to make them see. But it's our place to show them the evidence, to blow the trumpet. If you blow the trumpet, then you are not responsible for anybody's blood being on your hand. So on this first segment, I'm just going to say keep your mind open and your, keep your mind and your Bible open, people. Read the scriptures for yourself. Follow good teaching. I'm not talking about people that are going out trying to put their own opinions and stuff in there. No, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about people that are going from the Bible. They are taking the scripture from the Bible. Let us reason together. That's what the Bible said. Let us come. Let us open this Bible. Let's see what the word say. And then we go from there. People, Jesus said in Matthew 24, he said immediately after the tribulation of the old day, he was speaking of a specific day. What? Of the tribulation. After the tribulation of those days, meaning the, the, the bad time, um, he will send his angels to the four corners of the earth, that's north, south, east, and west, and gather his elect. He's going to gather them together. When? After the tribulation. Now, people, I don't know how. Now, that's Jesus' word. Now, many men don't believe that. Something wrong with many men. But there are many other scriptures that we're going to point to that we've already covered. But um, is there are other things that we need to go back. We need to go back, people. We need to, go, we, need to, we need to cover this thing until some of us get it. Because, people, we are living close to the end of time. And I will say this much in the next coming segment. For those of you that are upset and worried, well, I'm, I'm telling you, it's too early to get upset and worried because... We, yes, there are going to be two more major wars on this planet. Yes, it is. At least two more major wars going to be on this planet. The Bible tells us that. And in the next segment, I'm going to show it to you. So with that being said, remember what many men always say, whatever you get, whatever you get into. If God is not in it, it's best that you come out of it. And remember, Paul, one of his major obstacles was the ignorant brethren. Now you can read that for yourself. This is me, the man, saying peace. Goodbye.